In the center of Sofia, this computer scientist is on a hunt, a hunt for data. We are on one of the busiest crossroads in Sofia, in District Wozenets, and District Wozenets is our study area. We have uh, six LiDAR sensors uh, that uh, perform laser scanning of uh, the crossroad, and we use uh, this data to monitor the traffic uh, of the crossroad. So what's, what's over there? What's that? Uh, this is air quality station. Uh, it measures uh, air, air pollutants uh, and also uh, noise levels and rain levels, wind speed and direction. You can see the noise levels here during the weekend. There is no noise because there is no traffic. But now the noise levels are very high. My name is uh, Desislava Petrova Antonova. I'm leading uh, the City Digital Twin Pilot Project, uh, and uh, the aim of this project is to create uh, a digital twin of Sofia City. Petrova Antonova and her team are working on a digital replica of a central neighborhood in Bulgaria's capital, Sofia. To do that, they are collecting data all across the city. Now we are very close to the one of the tallest buildings in the district. This is uh, Hotel Marinewa. This is one of our use cases here. We are using the 3D model of this building to perform uh, CFD simulations. Data like this is used to build a virtual model of the neighborhood. That helps the researchers to understand, for example, how the wind moves through the architecture of the city or where air pollution is particularly bad. Then they use AI to come up with suggestions for how to make the neighborhood more livable. From ways to save energy to how to improve walkability. And they test these suggestions in their computer model to see how effective they are before being implemented in the real world. The main purpose of uh, the digital twin is to guide uh, this decision-making process uh, in the city. In the digital twin, you can simulate what-if scenarios. If I change uh, the street, or what will be happen if I construct new building here? The mistakes uh, should be made in the digital twin, not in the real city. The researchers we're meeting in Bulgaria aren't the only ones attempting to use AI to improve life in their hometown. Cities from Santiago de Chile to Hyderabad in India are working on similar initiatives. These smart cities are one of a few visible symptoms of an otherwise invisible revolution. AI technology has long become a part of our world, with AI algorithms deciding now, for instance, what we see on social media. And in Europe, at least, people will soon be using AI under a strict new rulebook being brewed up in Brussels. In many ways, the European Union is considered the global stronghold of privacy. The bloc already has much stricter data protection rules than competitors like China and the United States. Officials here have spent years drafting what's considered the world's most comprehensive legislation on AI. The idea? Regulating uses according to the risks they pose. And we're told that those risks are real. AI has been shown to replicate biases or supercharge disinformation. Artificial intelligence is a black box. And so the way you want to mitigate this risk is to ask the developers to document their data sets, give the information to the user of their artificial intelligence system about how their artificial intelligence system works. The question now is, do the companies developing AI technology consider this approach a blessing or a curse? We are designed to be a game changer. That's what the Commission expects from us, to, to change the uh, research system in Bulgaria. In Sofia, the Digital Twin Cities project is part of a broader big data initiative called GATE. It was founded in 2019 in cooperation with a university in Sweden and co-financed with 30 million euros in EU seed funding. My name is Sylvia Ileva and uh, I'm director of Gate Institute. 
Her center is doing research on how to apply artificial intelligence to develop real-life solutions. We defined uh, four application areas in the beginning. And in, in addition to future cities, other application areas digital health. Researchers at GATE are using AI to better understand cognitive diseases like Alzheimer's. They're also looking into how to use technology to detect and fight disinformation online. And the last uh, application area is smart industry, where we will offer some data services for companies. All of those projects rely on vast amounts of data to become effective. Data that's often difficult to obtain in privacy-savvy Europe. It's a big challenge uh, and uh, it's a challenge because of the people, because of the mindset of the people. And yet Ilyeva believes that the EU's approach of establishing strict rules to emerge as the world's leader in trustworthy AI is the right path forward. Absolutely, yes, it's, it's, uh, it's a matter of trust between us. But not everyone is convinced. We are in a technological race and the first thing that should be moving us is are we part of the technological revolution? Otherwise, the risk for Europe is to be kicked out of history. This summer, the former politician co-wrote an open letter with over 160 European business executives warning that the EU's planned AI laws could jeopardize Europe's competitiveness. We for sure have to be able to protect our citizens from collateral damages, but we have also to ensure our citizens that they will still be living in a continent that has the same access to technology that will go on with creating jobs, that will be sovereign in its technological uh, choices. O isn't alone. Other industry insiders express similar concerns. And yet, when we talk to digital rights advocates, they stress that protecting users' rights should always come first. To say that this harms competition, I think it's ludicrous. And I think it shows a very poor understanding of what protecting people means and what democracies mean. Look at what's happening with ChatGPT, for instance. Um, ChatGPT was launched as a test using us all as guinea pigs, uh, using our data, uh, going over any kind of regulation that already exists in Europe to protect, to protect people. Now they're being hit by all these lawsuits. So I just don't understand this logic of because the others are doing things wrongly, we should be able to do the same thing. At the same time, experts tell us that rules won't be the only factor determining Europe's success. Another one is money. Although private AI investment in Europe has been growing in recent years, it still lags behind China and even more so the US. And the challenge is, how do you change that? If we want to get back into the race, we need investors to believe that Europe is the right field to invest in technology. So we have to be aware and be very cautious of not over-regulating, otherwise we are threatening the investment and so we are threatening our own future. Back in Brussels, EU officials tell us their upcoming AI rules won't place undue demands on innovators. In fact, uh, what we ask uh, companies to do is to simply assess before they put uh, the artificial intelligence system to be used for a purpose that is considered high risk. And to be frank with you, um, a developer that develops AI for a high risk uh, intended purpose should do those things already. The block itself invested around 4 billion euros in artificial intelligence from 2021 to 2022. Although most of today's cutting edge AI applications were developed elsewhere, Brussels insists Europe is well placed in the race for AI. Everybody knows uh, ChatGPT, but in reality, there are also models that have been developed in the European Union. And maybe they're smaller and less known but they're there. It may be that we have a delay of about a year or so, but we are not so late and we can definitely still catch up. Artificial intelligence is here to stay. And experts agree that it will reshape the global balance of power. There will be two categories of companies and countries. The one that have access to the best AI models and the one that have not. But perhaps that depends on how you define success. 
While Europe may remain the underdog in terms of investment or innovation, the continent is leading the charge to define the limits of how AI can and should be used. That's why the AI pioneers emphasize the importance of working together. If you want to go uh, fast, then go alone. But if you want to go f uh, further, uh, then uh, go together. The Bulgarian researchers have big plans for the coming years. Here is our new building uh, that uh, we construct. Here we will install our big data infrastructure, a lot of uh, technologies. The computer scientist hopes that the digital twin of her city she's building will only be a beginning and that it will inspire others. We want to scale the project uh, to cover, for example, the whole city and uh, why not uh, to uh, collaborate with other cities uh, in Europe and uh, over the world. AI is on the rise. Now, Europe's challenge is to scale up its efforts without scaling back protections for the people down below. <laughs>